Right, good evening ladies and gentlemen, it's Anthony Carpen here and I have got with me the latest edition of Buses Magazine. And um, the reason why I have that one and the one from December and this one from ages ago, actually it's October 2011, is because of all of the consultations that are happening on everything buses. And even though we've come to the end of the recent consultation, we have got a great Cambridge uh, partnership assembly coming up um, in a couple of weeks and they've just put out the papers um, for it. Now there were two things that actually I wanted to um, pick up on uh, here with everything to do with buses because one of the things that struck me for years is how little advertising there is done at kind of bus stop level where most of us regular bus users catch the buses and you'd have thought that might have been a useful place to put publicity but still the people in power choose not to. Now one of the big issues with bus services in the grand scheme of things is ownership who should own them and this one from um, February's edition of Buses magazine states the following regarding the bus service improvement plans for Cambridgeshire and Peterborough that were actually rejected by uh, ministers or rather ministers basically said you're going to have to do a little bit better. When the bus service improvement plan was issued, it was stated that 92% of the network was commercial. All but a tiny fraction of that was run by Stagecoach until the extensive deregulations of autumn 2022. Now that was a really big deal here because it meant that a lot of students and young people in particular those that go to college uh, were unable to get to where they needed to be and so the combined authority had to go through this protracted retendering process and it says here that action has lifted the cost of contracted services from 3.36 million to around 4.7 million pounds. So that's a significant uplift and that's one of the reasons why we've got this thing called the Merrill Precept in your council tax bills that are coming through. Now this for me is a classic case of where the profits are privatised and the losses are socialised and it is one of the things where you know some people have quite understandably said look let's nationalise the lot and be done with it. Um, and as you can imagine, I'm in that school of thought. So I'm saying, yeah, renationalize them, and be done with it. Now, that's where kind of this edition comes in because it looks at the 25 years of change with the, um, which was kind of a, a look back at what the buses were doing between the privatization of the mid 1980s and October 2011 when this edition was published and obviously things have come further since then not least with electric buses and one of the things that really struck me with this one uh, with December's edition is it showcased a whole host of futuristic electric bus designs and for me that's not what we've seen in Cambridge nearly enough of is what these futuristic buses are going to look like. And so one of the things that I would like to see the Combined Authority doing is bringing some examples of what these electric buses will look like, and particularly the ones that don't look like the present ones now, but actually look more accessible, are more suitable for people with mobility scooters, people with prams and buggies, uh, and people with luggage. And, you know, especially in somewhere like Cambridge, where you've got people arriving with suitcases and the like at the at the railway station so yeah um you can order them these magazines either find them at w Wait smith or other outlets um or get them from keybuses.com finally final plug for richard and the gang at the cambridge area bus users uh, group and campaign um i was one of the people who was also there at the um the start needs more people to get involved basically um because there are a lot of changes happening. There are a lot of things that need scrutinising in terms of buses and bus services, and it needs more of you who use the buses more regularly than most of us in particular to be the eyes and the ears for the rest of the city as we seek to improve our bus services, irrespective of what you think of the proposals from the Greater Cambridge Partnership or the Combined Authority or anything to do with proposed road charging. Um, 
that the uh, presentations have said uh, cannot come in until the bus services have, have improved. Now, the ex-civil servant in me asks the question that still hasn't been answered is the one related to risk. What happens if we don't see the service level improvements that are proposed and basically predicted by the plans that have been put forward? What is the plan B? Um, and it's something that I think we should still hold um, those pushing for the plan to hold them to account too. Anyway, I'll leave it there. See you soon.